Shane! Oh, come on, Lise. You know you want to. I don't want it. Now get off! Oh, come on. I'm halfway there already. Halfway where? Dudley had its romantic night spots. And the only place hotter than the back seat of Shane's Vauxhall Viva was the bedsit of our beautiful English teacher, Miss Tip. Geraldine. Oh, Geraldine. I've just made a pot and thought you two must be parched. I'm sorry, Douglas. I know you're partial to a wagon wheel, but there's only fig rolls and bourbon creams, I'm afraid. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Titley. Shine! Geraldine. Oh, Geraldine. Just lend in that coconut and lager shampoo, you want? Great to get away from it all. I know. So, why don't we? You like all this countryside stuff? It's a bank holiday next weekend. Instead of going to the zoo in the castle, we'll be going to the Cotswolds. On that place Shakespeare lived. Really? Oh, Doug, that would be lovely. In fact, why not make a proper weekend of it, stay in a hotel and everything? Oh, Doug, Mark! Oh! Oi. Yes, all right. If you mind. Uh, a packet of, uh, uh, packet of con. Hello, Mr. Digby. Just brought Gordon out to help me with the shopping. He's such a little angel. Oh. His Veruca's nearly cleared up now. Anyway, don't let me hold you up. A uh, packet of to be grip for me knee. Cartilage uh, playing up. Some germaline, please. Gordon, show the man your Chinese burn. I still get the same old feeling. Don't mind, Mrs. Oh, Cooper. no, love. Now, look, you, my laddo, up them stairs and into that bath. Oh, oh come on now, oh. into that bath. I'm just about to put the kettle on and oh. sit down. We saw your fella over the town. How long have you been courting now? Oh, I ain't said the wrong thing, have I? Oh, no, no. In fact, Doug's just asked me to go away over the bank holiday. Oh, are you the lucky one? I remember when Baz and I first went away. Like rabbits we was. <laughs> of course, that was before he started with his bother downstairs. Oh, yes. Men, they all get their urges. Hey, men, you honest can save yourself for Mr. Wright. Gordon, what does saving yourself mean? Mum's not said anything about me in the bathroom. She was talking to Miss Titley about girls saving themselves. I knew she wasn't sullying herself with Digby. All this time she's been rejecting his Neanderthal urges. I knew she'd hold out for true love. I knew it. I don't think Miss Titley said she was saving herself. In fact, I think the point was that she wasn't. Gordon, what's the matter? I saw him today. Digby, in the chemist when Mum was getting me ointments. Oh, no. What? Is he sick? Oh, no. Oh, no! 
Oh, uh, did I say, lads? No footy practice this weekend. I'm off. Away. Oh, Grimley. If hardly had a go. Call it not out, eh? Still counts as a maiden over. In fact, you might say I'll be bowling a maiden over this weekend. Oh, yeah. Your P God Dynamo Digby is spending the weekend in a one star BB in Shafton La Mallet with a certain English teacher, and that's a double room. Am I just a. just a. just a trophy to you, Doug? What have I told you about reading those women's magazines? You were out, Grimley. But no, you had to have another chance. <laughs> out, out, out. You are out. Take a wild guess. Dogface Digby. I'm as much to blame. I was the one moaning we don't get any privacy. And now we're off to the Cotswolds for the weekend. The prospect doesn't bear thinking about. You better make sure you have all your injections before you let him anywhere near. All of a sudden it's become a major decision. Instead of something that happens, you know, naturally. Maybe to Douglas it's the kind of big romantic gesture he thinks you expect of him. Romantic? He's acting more like I belong on the shelf somewhere between his Duke of Edinburgh award and the pickled remains of his cartilage. He's a grown man who spends nearly all his time playing ball games with young boys. He feels an understandable pressure to prove his virility. Sounds to me, Geraldine, like you've got to ask yourself how much you actually feel for Douglas. This is the voice of the Mr. Arms. I can't let it happen. I can't. I've got to get there and stop their dirty weekend before she's violated by that pre-epic Philistine. Mum? Yes, love? I've been thinking. Oh, I know. You have a real thinker, you are. <laughs> About the bank holiday, why don't we go off in the caravan somewhere? Well, I thought you kids hated the caravan. You always say it's like being in prison, only with worse smells. It's like our last chance to all go away, together. Do you know you're right, Gordon? It is. I'll talk to your dad. The Grimleys, off in the caravan to Land Dudno. We don't have to go to Land Dudno again. We could go somewhere different, like... Oh, how about Shaft and Lamallet? You wouldn't know the waitress involved. With... Come in. Uh... No. Oh, yes. Oh, well, come on, Baz. It'll be great. You all need a holiday. Being on strike's really taking it out of you. No. Mostly it'll be just you and the boys. I don't want to sit in a caravan with that fop, Gordon. Having to listen to him go on about paintings and books. And his poxy poems. Well, that'll be Darren. The other one. Don't know about him. Listen to me, Baz. This may be the last chance the three of you get to spend some time together. The Grimly men. Off to the Cotswolds in the caravan. Oh, I'm filling up. Must be great having one of them. Get about all over the place and never have to get off your arse. Dad, please, we've got to. Oh, come on, it'll be great. You see, the kids are dead excited. If you like the idea so much, you take them. Oh, you've come back twice, the woman.
You are Doug Dynamo Digby. Women cannot resist you. You have the body of a Greek god. But obviously not that statue of the bird with no arms. Cheating. I'm not cheating. You are. I am not. You are. I'm not cheating. You're like a pair of kids. Mum, tell her, Darren. Whatever's got into you, Gordon? Yeah, Gordon, what are you so mardy about? Why can't the pair of you play nicely? Ooh. Gordon, is this a surprise? Uh, yes, miss. I haven't got long. What can I do for you? You always said if ever I was working on a poem and uh, needed someone's opinion. <laughs> Gordon, I'm packing at the moment. I've got to head out soon. Oh, I'll see. It's just you said if ever I was working on a poem. I suppose I am your English teacher. Come on. Is something the matter, Gordon? It's not your best teaching you again, is it? No, miss. It's just you've made it look really nice. Oh, it's just how I imagined. Imagined? Mm. Have a seat. This is a different poem from usual. Go on, don't be shy. <clears throat> if I build for her a cage, gilded by my devotion, if I clip her wings and keep her spirits from soaring into the skies above, I can never tame her, not to spread her wings and fly, for it is not the cage, the bird that I love. Gordon, that, that was beautiful. It's called The Love of Procrustes. Oh, the thief from mythology who stretched people or cut off their feet so they'd fit his bed. Yes, miss. You see, there are people who aren't right for each other, who force each other into doing things they don't really want to do. Shift on treacle, we don't want to be late. On your way, Grundy. You heard me. What are you waiting for, boy? We'll talk again soon, Gordon. Yes, miss. Bye, miss. that then? Destiny means for her to be mine. She can never give herself to him. They'll probably come back married. Never. Never. I don't know how long it'll take, but I'll give it a go. Oh, please hurry, Mr. Titley. It's really important. <sighs> Well, we're here. Oh, Doc. It's really nice.
Oh, no, it's raining. Looks like we have to stay in the room for a while. You don't ever give up to your Shane Tipley. Well, I just thought that if they were your lot were in there, we could have your room like. Oh, come on, Lise. If you'd open out soon, there's plenty of other girls who will. I'm a real catch, me. And you're saying you'll go off with someone else? I might. Come on, Lise. Come on. I suppose tonight's no worse night than any. Oh, great. 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 18. 19. 20. You're not going to read that all night, are you? Only until it stops raining. Then we'll find ourselves a nice little country inn. Oh, stop fiddling with me. You're always fiddling. I'm bored. Where's your reading book? I forgot it. This is the goalkeeper, this is the winger, this is the striker, and this is the last defender. The winger crosses to the striker, the striker heads it into the goal, offside or not offside. They're not in their own half. Good, no they're not. And the defender doesn't touch it first. Good, no he doesn't. Offside? No, behind the ball, girl! <sighs> Look, let me explain again. <sighs> There's no way round it. We need to replace this bracket. But, Mr Alder, we can't. There isn't time. No, he's right, Gordon. We won't finish this until the morning. But... but we've got to get there tonight. Gordon, don't get yourself worked up tonight or first thing in the morning. What difference does it make? I'd give it a moment if I were you. <clears throat> Camp, who are looking for a hard fight because they I can have the both of you, fight. you pair of fairies. The challenge is a tough man. You're telling miles better than ours. This is great. Has never had him off his Can't believe nobody wants to be in here watching it with you, Buzz. Oh. <sighs> Me neither. A bed trickle. I won't be a minute. Have you squeezed this in the middle? Look at it. I wore all these hairs in the sink. I must have shaved my armpits. Uh. What's the matter with you, Doug? Do you think women's armpits are naturally bald? Have you never been on the continent? No, I just thought that you were. you know. Doug, you have actually been away with a girlfriend before, haven't you? Yeah. Well, then you know that real women have hairy armpits and squeeze the toothpaste however they feel like. I'm not some sort of fantasy you see in a magazine. OK, OK, stop whining on. We're supposed to be on a dirty weekend. Doug Dynamo Digby. A fine figure of a man. This was supposed to be romantic. It was supposed to be about how much we feel for each other. Not some kind of dirty weekend. Ali has never had him off his feet in two fights. Please. Please, sir. Say hello to your dream lover. <laughs> Thank you. 
me. Oh, they said the other, the other G.I., went straight back home after the war. Oh, chuck, feed me chocolate. I'd rip off me nylons. Oh, chuck, chuck. Shane, you still haven't told me. Huh? The first time you did it, what was it like? An older woman. Come on, Darren, we're going. But I know we'll, we'll meet home. again some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do. White stuff. What? What now? Are an unromantic, lecherous ape, Doug Digby. And you, you, you snore. <laughs> Gordon knew Geraldine had resisted Digby. Surely he thought she must be saving herself for someone cultured, someone sophisticated. He believed, he truly believed, his moment was coming at last. A quick look at what we've got. Another adventure for Sherlock Holmes next. Then Barbara's birthday, so the whole team's off to the cottage in the country. Oh, nothing could go wrong there. That's at 2.40. Then later, cricket. It's comedy from the outside edge at ten past three.